One of the things I want to talk about is kind of the program pacing at Dare to Share. There's a very uh, specific method to the madness. Uh, but how does, you know, like the training style, the weekend style, the pacing, the movement feel as a youth leader uh, from the students uh, in the big room? There was something that was done in the last, last conference tour. It was a, a bit of a narration in acting out the story of the gospel through the entirety of scripture. And I remember a lot of, especially my older kids, I thought that really touched me. We asked them on video, we're making testimonies for church. What was your favorite part of, the, of Dare to Share? And they said, that was my favorite because I saw in that unique way how God loved me. It's not just some church story. It was, it was interpretive. It was very visual. It was a, it was a narrative, and I think that helps because there's all kinds of different kids there, and so some of the kids really latched onto that. Some of the kids they can't wait for the funny skit. That's like they're, it's like they're getting ready to rate the movie or something. They're looking for the funny skit to connect to something, or you know, some kids they like the video clips that'll come in from popular movies that are playing. Um, I think it helps because. They're all different, so they all receive differently. And so since we communicate differently and we hear different stuff, I know as a youth leader, there's a pretty good chance that most of my kids are going to get something. If they're there to listen, they're going to get it their way and in their language. Um, so that's, that's an encouraging thing to know that my kids are going to, it's not like school where it's just monologue from one teacher. There's multiple teachers on the stage. So that's nice. Um, it's just a lot of variety for the kids, which is a good thing, I think. One of the things that we really try to do is, is do kind of a strategy of training that internally we call it why, what, how, now. So why, what's the urgency behind it? What, what is the theological grid or truth we're trying to communicate? How do you actually do this in your life? Whatever we're talking about, like if we're talking about the inspiration of Scripture, how do you actually dive in and read God's Word? You know, if we're talking about prayer, how do you actually, why do you need it? What is it? How do you do it? And then what are we going to do right now to implement it? You know, and that's where I think the Dare to Share conference kind of sets apart a little bit uh, because we actually have the students put into practice what they've learned that weekend, and it hits all the different learning styles you know, uh, but we use video clips kind of every six to eight minutes. There's a new clip, there's a new um, sketch, there's an interactive question, there's something to do, there's standing up and going and talking to another kid. So how does that, like on, on a pacing, you know, uh, allow the weekend to feel uh, from the perspective of a student or a youth leader because there's so much happening? There's a lot that's jam-packed over the weekend, that's for sure. I mean, I think... They, they're energized, I mean, especially Friday night when we get there. I mean, the room is just electric, and uh, they're just taking it all in because it is something that you know you can. I don't think they're aware of the you know eight-minute rule or whatever it is, but they definitely are engaged mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. passionately part. For sure. You know, again, internally, <laughs> we've kind of ca called this this whole idea the catheter factor. That <laughs> that you ever see a movie that you. Are really enjoying and you got a big drink and you halfway through you have to go to the bathroom but you don't want to yeah so you wait for what seems like a little and then you run out use the restroom and come back in yeah. we kind of want that same feel at dare to share that kids sure. don't want to get up and leave because they they sure. don't know when the sketch is going to hit or the clip is going to hit mm -hmm. or the interactive is going to hit or we're going to do something crazy in the room to really engage them as opposed to music then 45 minutes of a speaker then a break then music then 45 minutes of a speaker, then a break. We really try to keep that pacing to where students don't want to leave. And I think they, students pay you back by staying in their seats. <clears throat> yeah. it's, it's the gospel message that you're, you're talking about. It's, you're, in, you're engaging with the kids, the gospel message. And, and I think for a teenager to hear that and the way you guys teach it, it almost like lets them know, okay, I don't have to be a scholar. Mm -hmm. You're just bringing up a real life issue. You just, you just showed a video clip or, this funny skit that you guys just did in front of us, I can tell that story mm -hmm. to my friend. It's not something, th you know, to where they, they don't know what the right words to say. It's just, you know, th it just gives them an opportunity to bring God up. And I mm -hmm. think that, you know, it's, it's just that engaging with the gospel. It's that gospel message that I think our kids are hungry for to mm -hmm. hear. It's the love. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's easy to 
to articulate to their friend. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's important. Yeah, I had that's, kids that were, that were brand new to the conference. They didn't know what to expect. They knew we were going. They knew there was going to be some, some kind of te teaching or preaching or speaking. And, and their time was like, it, the time flew, which is ironic because it's, it's a long weekend. But it's almost like they were learning on accident because there was fun. There was engaging. It didn't feel forever. And, I, and then like, oh, we're going somewhere now. We're going back, we're going back to the hotel or, or now we're going to outreach or what do we do next? It was, it was neat to see them not give you that look of, are we done yet? <laughs> and so it, that was neat. They almost wanted to stay there and, and keep looking through because they got the booklets that they're, that they're tracking along with. So there's stuff to write in and to look at and hold and, and conversation. So it's, they don't feel like they're in school. It's, it's a lot of different, but there's still a lot of teaching and that, that was encouraging to see because they didn't disengage in just a couple minutes. And my favorite part is at the very end of the conference, getting to hang out with the students because it's finally when we have a break and go get to be in the crowd. And I love that now part because I feel like so often students will come up to me even as one of the speakers part of the and they will say things like, you know, I made a commitment here to read my Bible. Hey, I, it was really hit me that I need to pray for my friends. So I'm going to spend 15 minutes a day praying. Mm -hmm. And there is this sense of, okay, great, you know, inspiring, you know, exciting movie clips, skits, all for the point of, okay, what are you going to do now yeah. about that? And that's what I love hearing from the students of they've made decisions, commitments, and uh, brought them to a decision point of, I want this to become part of my life when I leave, that now part. Mm -hmm. It just gets me so excited after the conference seeing that play out. 